So today in this video, we will be learning one more shortest path algorithm which gives us the shortest path from any given source to all other nodes. Now in our previous videos, we have learned some other algorithms like Dijkstra's algorithm. Now Dijkstra's algorithm does give you the shortest path from source to every other node. But Dijkstra's algorithm doesn't work for negative edges. I'm going to show you why. Just imagine there is a negative edge. Okay. So just imagine this is a negative edge with minus 2. So when you apply Dijkstra, what happens is just imagine this is the source. So you go from the source to this node and the distance is computed as minus 2. Then from here, again you try for its adjacent and the source distance is minus 2. Again you try from here, it becomes minus 4. Again you try, it becomes minus 6. Again you try, it becomes minus 8. So there is an infinite loop because if you keep on moving like this, like this, like this, the distance gets reduced, reduced, reduced. So you will never be able to find the shortest distance and your Dijkstra's algorithm will end up in a infinite loop. So Dijkstra's algorithm will not be able to find shortest path if, if your graph contains negative edges. So that is where Dijkstra fails. Now Bellman Ford will work for negative edges, but there are certain conditions. I'm going to tell you that. Now the Bellman Ford algorithm works for directed graph. Only there is a condition. If there is a negative cycle, yes, if there is a negative cycle, then we will not be able to find out the shortest path. Again, it's very obvious because imagine the cycle is 1, then to 2, then to 3, and then again back to 1. And this is like 6, minus 12, and let's say minus 7. So this cycle is negative. So if there is a negative cycle, and if you are willing to find a shortest path from let's say 1, 2, 3, from 1 to 3 on the shortest path, I can say I will go like this, then like this, then like this, like this, and keep on encircling. Since it's a negative cycle, the more number of turns I will take, the distance will reduce. First, the distance would be 6 minus 12, that's minus 6. If I take another turn, the distance is gone reduce significantly because it's a negative cycle. The more number of turns I take, the distance gets reduced. That is why, in case of negative cycle, Finding of shortest path is not practically possible using Bellman Ford algorithm. But Bellman Ford algorithm is an algorithm which will tell you if there exists a negative cycle or not. So, with the help of Bellman Ford algorithm, you can easily detect if there is a negative cycle. Now, in case you want to implement the Bellman Ford for undirected graphs, so what you will do is for undirected graphs, the edges are like this, right? The edge is like this. Imagine the edge weight is 2. So what you will do is, you will convert this undirected to a directed graph. Something like this. You will say, a, a edge of 2 exists from this to this. And a reverse edge of 2 exists from this to this. So you can convert the undirected graph to this in order to implement Bellman Ford algorithm. Because if you write the edges in this way, we can say that this is a directed graph. Now, now in case there is a negative edge, in case there is a negative edge in your undirected graph, like minus 2, the moment you turn it to a directed graph, see what will happen. You are saying minus 2, and then again you are saying minus 2. So this turns out to be a negative cycle, right? So Bellman Ford will detect it, and it will not work for it. So in short, I can say Bellman Ford works for directed graph, be it positive edges, be it negative edges, right? If Bellman Ford has to work in undirected graphs, it has to be converted into a directed graph using bidirectional edges. Now, Bellman Ford will only not work if there is a negative cycle. In both the cases, if you find a negative cycle, Bellman Ford is not going to work. But the advantage Bellman Ford will give you is it will detect you a negative cycle. So in short, that is about Bellman Ford. Now we will understand the algorithm. So let's understand the Bellman Ford algorithm using this graph. So at first I will be explaining you the algorithm, and right after that I will be telling you what is the intuition behind this algorithm. So first. 
try to understand the algorithm get a knack of the algorithm then you can watch out the intuition so that it sets in properly so the algorithm states that whatever edges is given to you beat any order right you can write those edges and after that what you need to do is you need to relax all those edges n minus 1 times exactly now why n minus 1 times i'm going to tell you in the intuition part but you have to relax all the edges exactly n minus 1 times and what does relaxation means if the distance of u plus distance of the weight is lesser than distance of v you do this let's understand what this exactly means so for doing this what you need to do is you need to create a distance array so let's create a distance array so the belmont algorithm states that given all the edges you can take the edges in any order you want any order doesn't matter what you need to do is you need to relax all the edges exactly n minus 1 times and the meaning of relaxation is this now you might ask why n minus 1 time why are we relaxing what is the exact intuition behind the algorithm i'm going to tell you everything but i want you guys to have a knack of the algorithm at first by looking at the dry run so that the algorithm sets in your brain and after i give you the dry run i'm going to tell you the entire intuition behind the algorithm why n minus 1 what is the intuition behind doing behind relaxing the edges and everything but as of now please understand the algorithm so the algorithm states you have to take a distance array and initially whatever is the source source can be anything so over here the source is zero so zero index will have a distance zero because the minimum distance to reach a source is zero itself and everyone else will have an infinity a bigger value which is not possible so after this you have to start relaxing so what is it said you have to relax n minus one time so how many times n minus one times what is n over here if i carefully observe n is six over here so you have to relax exactly five times n is zero one two three four five so n is exactly six so you have to relax exactly five times so what does relaxation means at first this is what you have to do so basically you start with the first step is distance of three what is distance of three that's infinity plus weight what is the weight six is that lesser than distance of v what is distance of v at the first that's two what is that infinity is infinity plus six lesser than infinity obviously not so the relaxation has been done for the first edge and you need to do this for everyone let's do it for the next it's distance of five plus the weight one is it lesser than distance of three again distance of five is infinity plus one is lesser than infinity will come as false so this has been done the next one is zero so what do you write is is distance of zero which is zero plus the weight that is 5 is that lesser than distance of 1 and that's infinity so i see that yes it is so we replace infinity by 5 because 0 plus 5 is lesser so this is done now i'm going to do it for this so now distance of 1 plus minus 3 is that lesser than distance of 5 now what is distance of 1 that's 5 plus minus 3 that's minus of 2 is that lesser than distance of 5 definitely so you update it to minus of 2 so this has been relaxed now let's relax the next one so it's distance of 1 plus minus 2 lesser than distance of 2 so what is distance of 1 5 plus minus 2 is 3 so distance of through distance of 2 will be changed to 3 so relaxation of this edge is also done next is this one so let's write this what is that distance of 3 plus minus 2 is that lesser than distance of 4 what is distance of 3 infinity so 
infinity plus something will uh, again be something near about infinity so this this let's not consider this so i can say this edge has been relaxed now it's time for the last edge that is distance of 2 what is distance of 2 3 plus 3 is it lesser than distance of 4 so i say distance of 2 is 3 3 plus 3 is 6 so for 4 currently i get someone as 6 so i update it to 6 so i can see that all the nodes has have been relaxed so i can say it has been relaxed one number of time it has been relaxed for once that's time to relax it the second number of time now when you come for second number of time look what happens for the first time it's distance of 3 plus what 6 is that lesser than distance of 2 previous time the previous relaxation distance of 3 was infinity but now distance of 3 is still infinity so no help so next is distance of 5 so let's check distance of 5 plus 1 is that lesser than distance of 3 so what is distance of 5 that's minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1 is that lesser than distance of 3 yes so you're getting something as minus 1 something to observe over here distance 3 was infinity plus something so you are not you haven't reached 3 yet but now you have updated 3 so in the next relaxation what will happen is you will automatically get some distance 3 so that this you can update so this is where relaxation helps next will be this distance of 0 plus 5 is that lesser than distance of 1 again distance of 1 is 5 and distance of 0 is 0 so it doesn't matter it is not lesser so this has been relaxed next will be this so let's do it distance of 1 plus a minus 3 is that lesser than distance of 5 let's see what is distance of 1 that is 5 so 5 plus minus 3 is minus 2 so can I say distance of 5 is actually minus 2 so there's no need to relax uh, or reduce it so this is also done now let's do for this so I can see again distance of 1 plus minus 2 is that lesser than distance of 2 again it will not be because you'll again get 3 and we already have a 3 so this has also been done let's do it for this so now distance of 3 which we have computed now minus 1 plus minus 2 is that lesser than distance of 4 and we can see yes it is because minus 1 plus minus 2 is minus 3 so I can definitely say it is so I replace 6 I replace 6 by minus 3 again makes sense the distance of 4 was storing 6 because of this re this path now I have got this path right so you have got this path this is how Bellman Ford works so you have done for this next we will be doing it for this so it's basically distance of 2 plus 3 is that lesser than distance of 4 so again distance of 2 is going to be 3 plus 3 that is 6 that is not so we have done one more relaxation I can say so in this way you will do the third relaxation the fourth relaxation the fifth relaxation and at the end of the day you will get the distance array as 0 5 3 3 1 2 this will be the last distance array that you will get so if you do it a relaxation n minus 1 times you are definitely going to get your answer why n minus 1 I am going to tell please wait for the intuition part but I hope you have understood the algorithm you are going to relax it n minus 1 time for every edge right now how do you detect how do you detect that there is a negative cycle now since I am saying since the algorithm states that when you relax it for n minus 1 times yes I am repeating when you are relaxing it for n minus 1 time whatever distance you get that is ultimately the shortest distance possible so how to detect if it's a negative edge weight so what you do is 
you try to relax it one more time after you have done n minus one times i repeat after you have done n minus one times you try to relax it one more time and you will see that the distance that shortest distance will again reduce and if that happens that means it has a negative cycle Bellman for clearly states after relaxation of n minus 1 times whatever distance array you have that is the shortest possible and you cannot have any further shortest distance so if after doing n minus 1 relaxations in the last relaxation that you do in the single relaxation that you do afterwards if the distance reduces yes that means it has a negative cycle why does this happen imagine if you have a graph like this just imagine if you have a graph like this so what happens is imagine this is minus 3 this is minus 6 and this is minus 1 so 1 keeps on changing on every relaxation because it is having a negative cycle 1 keeps on changing every time because it is a negative cycle no matter how many relaxations you will do the distance of 1 the distance of 2 is going to change because there is a negative cycle and you will say that I'm going to travel it twice, thrice, four times, five times and the distance will automatically change. So that is why when you do one more relaxation, you will get the distance to be negative. So this is the bellman forts algorithm. Now I'll be talking about the intuition part. Let's understand the intuition. So I hope you have understood the entire algorithm. Now the question might arise, why n minus one relaxations? Why not lesser? Why not more? So I'm going to tell you that. So imagine, just imagine, if there is something with uh, five nodes, there are n equal to five nodes. So I'm definitely sure, I'm definitely sure, the longest path that I can have from a source to any node will be of a distance n minus one. That is four over here. I think everyone is agreeing with this because this is the longest possible path you can have in a graph. That is n minus one edges so that's the longest path weight can vary but i'm talking about the length of the path so the longest path is definitely four now just imagine the edges are probably ordered in this way uh, a b c d e are the nodes and you're given edges like this d c d b c and a b the edges are given in this way so initially on the first relaxation because you are definitely going to do four relaxations so i'm very much sure on the first relaxation the distance of d plus weight lesser than distance of e because everything is infinity this relaxation when you do you will have something like distance of d which is infinity plus some weight lesser than distance of e this is also infinity no one gets updated next when you do distance of c plus d no one gets updated next when you do distance of b plus something to c no one gets updated but when you do a plus something, let's say this is 3 and you know the source will always be 0. This guy gets updated to 3 but that happens in the last step of your first relaxation, right? That will be the first relaxation case. Then the next relaxation what happens is D and D e have no update, C and D no update. But B and C, for an example this is 4, this makes this guy updated to 7. So in the second relaxation, C will be updated. And the third relaxation, again D will not be updated. Again D and E will have no consequence. But C and D will definitely have. Imagine this is 1. This makes this guy 8. Now in the fourth relaxation, E will definitely be updated. Just in case this is 3, this gets updated to 11. So this is the reason. This is the reason. We are definitely sure that on N minus 1 relaxation, that is the maximum relaxation that we will be requiring because that is the longest path we can have that's why n minus one relaxation and the intuition about this is very simple uh, you're just comparing because if from u you are taking a distance wt and if you're reaching v in some shortest distance you update it uh, there's nothing intuitive about it it's very simple i hope you have understood the intuition about n minus one relaxation exactly because that is what you have to do at the worst case at the worst ordering of the edges and i also hope you have understood the negative stuff you just need to do one more relaxation now coming across what will be the time complexity now since you are doing 
exactly n minus 1 relaxations and you're doing it on the number of edges so it's definitely going to be n minus 1 into e that is the time complexity of the bellman fort which is uh, very bad uh, when you compare this to dijkstra then again it helps you to detect if there are negative cycles or not and the space complexity is again you're using a distance array so a big o of n for that so that will be the space complexity and you're storing edges so you can take them into account but this will be the time complexity and the space complexity for the bellman ford algorithm so in the c plus plus code as you can see i've taken the uh, number of nodes the number of edges the u v w t all the edges and i made sure that i've stored them in a struct in a struct node so all the edges have been stored in this struct node right after this i've taken the source because i have to find the shortest path from the source right after that i've declared a distance array with infinity and i know the distance to source will always be zero so let's mark the distance to source uh, to be zero always right after this yes right after this i can say i will iterate from one to n minus one because that many times i have to re relax the edges so i run a loop for relaxing the edges and inside that i have to iterate for every edge i iterate for every edge and i do the relaxation if relaxation is happening if it is lesser i update the distance that is what i do very simple straightforward so i am doing n minus 1 relaxation on every edge simple relaxation n minus 1 relaxations have been done after this i do one more relaxation on all the edges one relaxation on all the edges and if this is satisfied that means the distance is still still reducing i can say there is definitely a negative cycle and i can uh, have a counter and break out now if the counter has not been set i can say i have shortest distance and i can definitely print all those shortest distance right over here so this will be for the cpp code so it's time to talk about the java code for the bellman ford algorithm so as usual i initially declare n to be 6 i'm just declaring a dummy array and since we only require edges there is no need to take any adjacency list i store everything in an edges list so i've stored everything in an edges list for that i have uh, defined a class node and in the class node i have u v weight and i have defined a constructor in order to initialize everything and we have three getter functions in order to access all those three three variables so right after that i i call this bellman ford algorithm with uh, the adjacent uh, edges with the node n and with the source so this is the bellman ford algorithm if you carefully observe which has the edges which has n and which has the source node now if you remember in bellman ford we required a distance array so i am defining a distance array uh, each of which is filled with infinity a very large number and i know the distance still source will always be zero that is something which everyone knows the distance still source is definitely going to be zero now what i do is what i do is i iterate from one to n minus one why because the relaxation has to be done n minus one times and across all the edges so across all the edges and the relaxation is very simple this is the formula for relaxation that we have already written distance of u plus the weight if lesser than distance of v you update it so the relaxation this is the entire relaxation for all the edges and you do it for n minus one times so i can say this is the entire relaxation for n minus one times now once i have done this i need to do one more relaxation to check if there is a negative cycle what i do is i do one more relaxation and in this relaxation i do check i do check if the distance is reducing and if it reduces further I can say there is definitely a negative cycle because I just did one more relaxation on the edges and I figure out the distance is still reducing which is practically not possible thereby I mark the uh, flag as 1 and I say there is a negative cycle and if the flag is marked as 0 that means there was never a negative cycle and I can definitely print all the shortest paths to the nodes i so this is how the java code will look like so guys I hope you have understood the entire explanation as well as the intuition so just in case you did please 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 make sure you like this video and if you are new to our channel do not forget to subscribe to this channel 
with this i'll be wrapping up this video let's meet in the next video where i'll be discussing some other concept